Hey everyone, I recently watched The Marvels, and going into it, my expectations were on the floor. The last few Marvel films, with the notable exception of Guardians 3, have been either just okay or disappointing. This new entry, however, leans more on the disappointing side, which is a shame because I do quite like the director, Nia DaCosta, who gave us the new Candyman. I don't think the direction here is necessarily the problem though. Nia DaCosta did also work as a writer on this film, which is where the problems start to arise. Both Candyman and the Marvels were written by three different people. Both groups included Nia DaCosta as a co-writer. As you can see, both films have similarities. So, what went wrong with the Marvels? Why does Candyman work and the Marvels doesn't? Well, I'm going to answer this question in a few minutes, but first I would like to talk about the positives of the film. This is because I do think there are quite a few good elements which should be mentioned. The best part of this film for me, and for most other people, is the character of Miss Marvel, played by Iman Vellani. She works really well in this, and is a great character overall. She is charming and the funniest part of the film. She brings such a fantastic energy to this and bounces off the other actors nicely. I think it's a dynamic that works, especially when it changes by the end of the story, like it does here. Miss Marvel is still a bubbly character by the end, but her admiration for Captain Marvel changes to mutual respect. The relationship between the three characters is also a highlight, as we have one character who is a Captain Marvel fangirl, and the other who resents Captain Marvel. This then creates an interesting chemistry between the characters, the only problem being that they don't take this idea far enough. They touch on the idea, but they don't expand upon it, and it comes across as surface level. The filmmaking surprised me several times throughout. The cinematography had its moments where it shined. Some genuinely good shots which I took a mental note of. The fight scenes were great in this and pulled inspiration from several video games. Nia DaCosta talked about this in an interview and by watching the movie you can tell. The choreography of the three heroes tagging in and out feels inspired from the different medium. The whole idea of these characters swapping places is a fun concept and I think the Marvels embraces that fun. This movie has a few compelling ideas to it, but rarely develops them far enough. Most of this feels half-baked. It's fun, but doesn't go much deeper than that. If it spent more time developing these ideas, then it would have made for a better film. In many aspects, this is barely a movie. The villain is as bare bones as you can get. We get no depth or intrigue, but instead the bare minimum. The conflict between Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel also felt kind of hollow to me. I think this is because the character of Captain Marvel is one that is hard to connect to. We don't know much about her as a person. We've had multiple appearances from her, but we never get a chance to warm up to her. Another reason why this conflict and Captain Marvel's journey as a character doesn't work is because it's poorly written and doesn't expand enough on the issues presented. The mistake that Captain Marvel makes is a big one and is a part of the film I would have liked to have seen explored. This movie's biggest problem is the fact that there just isn't enough. It's lacking in some fundamental areas of the script and feels more like a TV special rather than a feature film. The film has no interest in developing or featuring the villain. The first scene feels like it's there because it has to be rather than because it wants to be. The MCU has a villain problem, but this is worse than usual. I do, however, prefer this movie to something like Ant-Man 3, because it doesn't do anything horrendously wrong. At the end of the day, The Marvels is just a fun, underbaked, slightly bland Marvel film. It doesn't by any means reach the lows of Thor Love and Thunder. I enjoyed it and don't think it's that bad. It's getting way more hate than it deserves. But some of the hate is understandable, because it definitely does have its problems. A few more issues that this film has is that it relies on you to watch other MCU projects to care about certain characters. For example, you have to watch WandaVision to care about Monica. There are also editing issues. Lots of reshoots make this feel a bit messy and the flow of the story here is weird. A lot of this movie feels rushed. For me, what stood out was the transition to the third act. It just felt jarring to me. I did think the performances were good. Pretty much everyone did something with the material that they were given. The main trio were all solid, and so was Sam Jackson as expected. 
even if this portrayal of Nick Fury is wildly different from the one we saw in Secret Invasion. Overall, this is a harmless film. It has issues for sure, but I think there is enough good here to somewhat sustain itself. I wouldn't call it a good film, but don't think it is that bad. For my score, I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching and subscribe for some more film content. I guess that's goodbye for now.